Hello, this is Matt from TracyBat.co.uk. I'm from Boxings.com, looking here at the Sony Ericsson Xperia Arc. This was announced at MWC in Barcelona just, uh, what, not even a month ago. And uh, this Arc is actually one of only about four prototypes that are uh, in existence at the moment. Sony Ericsson have kindly allowed us to uh, borrow it for the uh, purpose of doing a video review or video tour. Um, but they are keen for us to point out that it is a prototype, one of an early model, one of only four. Um, so the hardware is probably going to be uh, unchanged, but uh, obviously it is potentially subject to change. And uh, we're looking at an early ROM build, so anything you see here may change, um, although probably not drastically. Um, so let's take a look around. On the front we have a 4.2 inch display, which is 480 by 854 pixels. So slightly wider than the standard 48800, um, so that's pretty cool. And uh, underneath we have three buttons, so you have back, home and the menu button. And on top we have an ambient light sensor and that kind of stuff. There's a loudspeaker just on top two. Right on top of the handset we have a power button and a cover over a micro HDMI connector because this does uh, actually well, obviously have full HDMI output so you can output straight from the display onto uh, an HDMI capable TV or projector uh, which is very cool. It takes all of the, everything on display, not just video or photos, but everything that you see on display will go on the screen. Uh, and if you use it with certain Sony um, HD TVs, certainly the more recent ones, you can actually use the remote control from the TV to control the content on the actual handset, which is a pretty cool feature. Uh, on the left hand side, uh, we just have a 3.5mm headphone connector uh, which will probably undoubtedly come with a wired headset um, but uh, obviously we have to use our own headphones, that's pretty cool. On the bottom, eyelet there for connecting up a phone charm, lanyard, that kind of stuff. A uh, little thumb or cut out there for removing the back cover which we'll do in a second. And uh, then a little hole there which is the microphone. On the right hand side, you have a dedicated camera button just there bottom and an up and down volume control rocker. Then at the top we have uh, the, well it's a, similar to micro USB, it will take a normal micro USB uh, connector so it will take a sync charge cable um, but it is the sort of square version which uh, is designed to take I believe uh, a slightly higher voltage or slightly higher ampage so it will charge more rapidly um, so that's why it's slightly more square. And above that we have a little LED, and that LED will give us the charge status, so when it's on charge it will flash red uh, until it's charged, which will, in case it will turn green. Um, it will come with a charger, very similar to this. This is a pretty straightforward uh, charger they've sent us, which is obviously a micro USB to USB style charger. Pretty straightforward, and clearly obviously I don't have a box for this prototype handset, um, but we'll have a, undoubtedly have an unboxing video of the full and final thing when it becomes available. Now on the back, uh, we have a 8.1 megapixel autofocus camera with an LED flash. Of course, we can record, has pretty much become the norm now. We can record HD video at 720p. And this one is uh, actually the blue to silver fade. There is also uh, another one which is uh, um, silver, uh, silver to misty silver. This one, I believe, is called the Midnight Blue. Uh, the back cover does just pop off like so. It's fairly plastic back cover. Um, but underneath that we have a, well, seems to be a huge battery, which uh, is uh, 1500 milliamp hours. So that's quite substantial uh, battery. It's very thin though, but it's fairly substantial. Micro SD card socket just here. Um, I would imagine that we are going to see uh, it bundled with a micro SD card. And it will support up to 32 gig micro SD. Um, we also have the space for the SIM card and a second microphone. Uh, presumably, the second microphone will be used for noise cancelling to improve your call quality. Just pop that back cover back on. Now, the thing about the Arc, and uh, anybody that's listened to our podcast or heard me talk about this already uh, would have heard me going on about this, but it really does feel quite nice in the palm of your hand. Uh, the shape of the back and also the styling, the curved edges and the contour mean that it does feel like a really well made quality handset. The feel of it in the hand I think is important uh, and I talk about this fairly often in our videos but because you do spend a lot of time with a phone or any type of handset like this in your hand I think it's important how it feels and this does feel quality, it feels nice. It's light, only 117 grams, 
very thin, um, 8.7 millimeters at its widest point, uh, which is again phenomenally thin. Uh, 125 millimeters from top to bottom, and 63 millimeters wide, still has the quality feel to it. Uh, it doesn't feel very plastic. I did comment on the back being plastic, but it just doesn't feel that way. It does feel quality. Uh, anyway, so let's just power on and we'll have a look. It has a 1 GHz uh, processor uh, coupled with um, well, uh, 512 meg of RAM uh, and as I say up to 3, 32 meg, uh, 32 gig uh, micro SD card support, 8.1 megapixel camera, it'll have Bluetooth 2, accelerometer, proximity sensor, ambient light sensor, uh, built-in compass, um, GPRS, uh, HSDPA, 3G, uh, quad band and tri band respectively I believe. Um, also we will have GPS and all those sorts of things. Everything you pretty much come to expect from these handsets now. One thing that I uh, must comment on, and I've already seen one of these handsets demoed um, just a couple of weeks ago, and that is how the quality of the display. Now display doesn't come across it very well in a demo video, I appreciate. Um, so you have to take my word for it, but it is a uh, uh, normal LCD display, obviously capacitive touch screen, but it's a it's a normal LCD technology, no AMOLED, no, no Super AMOLED or anything like that. Um, but they've done something with the screen that makes it just really jump out at you. The colour and the quality is very good. There's one thing that they have also done is this the front screen or front plastic uh, portion that goes over the display, which is your basically your touch screen, um, has no air gap between that and the LCD panel which uh, also adds to the quality, so you don't get as much reflection um, from the display um, because you're only seeing it from one surface and effectively not two, so that's pretty pretty cool. Um, so we're going to go through here and just quickly set up. It's going to complain that I don't have a SIM card, so we're not going to worry too much about that. So we start up um, and we have something that's fairly familiar, like the Timescape view um, what we've seen on certainly earlier uh, Sony Ericsson handsets uh, and we can swipe across for the various pages of um, widgets and so on. There's five that we have available at the moment uh, with Timescape here at the bottom. Um, it's not connected to a network just at the moment, obviously you've got Google search. Um, any music would be here on your tra uh, tracks and playback and uh, the video app straight into a video application here. And again, um, despite having an iPhone 4, and I really like my iPhone 4, the video quality and playback on this handset is frankly staggering. When I watched this demo, um, I just couldn't believe the, the quality of the display, despite, as I say, only being LCD and not being massively high resolution. Um, it's very, very good. So, um, we've just got a quick demo video there. I think that's Toy Story they've installed for us. Um, but that will work straight from a widget on the desktop or on the home screen. Um, and then have things for audio and uh, photos and video. Then you have media messaging, button in the center, brings up uh, the full list of applications. Again, on multiple pages. And some of the things that you can do here is you can move things around so you can reload to your home screen. Again, it's pretty straightforward, and I can take that back. Uh, and I can also change, uh, I'm not sure how we do it. Uh, you can actually move the order of these around on the display. I've actually seen that demoed, so you can change that around. Maybe not. I'm not 100% sure how that works. Oh, there we go. So we can change the own order, alphabetical, most used, and rich recently installed. Uh, and that moves all those around. And uh, there is a way to move all these around. Uh, without putting them on the home screen. Now, I'm not 100% sure how that works, but uh, nevertheless, we have to trust me that it is possible because uh, I've actually seen it work. But uh, you can actually create folders, like so. So let's create a folder, and then you'll have a folder on your desktop which will have more than one application in it as well. So it means that you can set things up and really customize it to quite a high degree. Um, and as I say, you, what you really can't appreciate in a video like this is the quality of the display, the colours around this area here, specifically the reds and the greens are 
pretty much amazing actually. I can't really say too much about it, it's really very good. So I'm going to go in here, go into the settings menu, uh, let me turn on the wireless networks, turn the Wi-Fi on, and let's pick up a Wi-Fi network, and connect to one. Uh, before I do so, I've got uh, plenty of real estate on the screen for the touch screen display, so I can go ahead and use it. Obviously I can turn it around the other way, then I have a much, much larger quality keyboard in landscape which is brilliant for you know real uh, functional typing okay and there we are connected to a wireless network which is pretty good so if we then go home these things on here will actually begin to update so we've got our Facebook and Twitter streams that we can go and add so I can actually register for my uh, Facebook account or my Twitter account or both so that the um, timescape will actually update so I'll be able to go back through forward through a history of stuff with the timescape I'm not going to do that right now because uh, well, it's only got a certain amount of time that we can have a look at the demo. Um, but we can have a look in here. We'll have a look at Android Market, for example. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and sign into my account here. Okay, and then we go in and accept terms and conditions. And go and sign in. Which takes just a moment or two. There we go. So we can actually set all this stuff up on here. Uh, we've obviously got games. And there's been some recent changes to the look and feel of the Android market, which is pretty good. Um, but once we sign into Android market, we then have our email, G Gmail. So that will actually sync up. It takes a few minutes to do. But uh, that works alongside your um, account with Android market. We also have Maps. Again, Google Maps. Or has come to expect. Um, let's turn on GPS, use GPS satellites, agree, and use wireless networks to actually find our location, agree. And if we go back out here, and we can go, picks up our location, which works quite well, and it's pretty straightforward. So that was uh, pretty speedy. I uh, also have a turn by turn navigation, Google Talk, Gallery, let's take a quick look at the web browser, which is asking me to insert a SIM card, which I'm not going to do right now. And let's head over to our site. And it's loading very quickly. Obviously, we're using a broadband connection, not the fastest or, or here anyway, but uh, loading pretty rapidly. The layout is uh, really very nice, clear quality finish to it and uh, the way it's loaded and again looks really very nice. Even the text as small as it is there, whether or not the camera can pick that up, is actually legible. Obviously we can double tap to zoom in and read it and the text does reflow within the display works very well. Now we can tap to come back out or we can use two fingers and zoom up and down and around but works really quite nicely. We can also use the zoom functions in the corner if we want to but it's extremely good. Turn it this way and we can look at it in landscape mode and then come back out there. So that's really nice. And got places and latitude YouTube. Let's just take a look at YouTube for the sake of it. search for NeoD, which is our Google account name. Uh, and we've got a few things on here, uh, nicely laid out. Again, some changes recently to the uh, YouTube app on Android, which is really quite nice. So we've got some stuff in here, and we can view that. Oh, that works, again, really quite nicely. Come back out of there. What else we've got installed? Let's take a look. We've got a track ID, we've got an FM radio, which is really good. News and weather, downloads, sync, Facebook, live wear manager, and a few other bits and pieces. Take a quick look at the camera. I don't have anything particularly exciting to take pictures of, but we'll take a picture of that cable just for the sake of it. 
There we go. And the shooting time is pretty quick. So I'm able to take a number of successive pictures pretty quickly and then I can use tapping around the display to actually take the pictures as well if I want to. Uh, I can change the settings from uh, 6, 8 and so on so I can put it to 8 megapixel mode or into 2 megapixel mode in 16 by 9 uh, auto scene, I can actually set up, turn the flash on and off and various other settings, it does also do face tracking which it's trying to, trying to do there and then video also can be recorded so that's again very good camera, uh, camera work on the sound sets is uh, again quite good, they've spent a lot of time Trying to get the camera just right. Got the office suite on there as well. Uh, let's see if Gmail has still hasn't uh, has synchronised there. Unfortunately, let's see if we can actually refresh that. No, Google Mail isn't refreshing. I think that's really more to do with Google. Oh, there we go. And things like Welcome to Android, and we can view it that way around and this way around. All pretty straightforward stuff. One thing that I can't demonstrate to you just at the moment. Uh, is the main email account settings, so we can go into the email account uh, and if I go into here and set up something, blah blah blah, and go into my email setup uh, I can set pop, POP3, IMAP, Pet Exchange, Active Sync. Uh, one thing I will do when I've got a little bit more time to do a demo for you, um, I will actually show you what the email account works like, but uh, just to give you a brief description, when you turn the handset into the landscape uh, orientation You'll see a list of messages on the left hand side and a preview of the message on the right hand side. Kind of similar to how Outlook works and, and or dare I say that how, how it would work on the iPad. But uh, you do have that view which is uh, something I believe is, fairly, is actually unique to uh, Sony Ericsson. I'll come back and do another demo of that when I've got a bit more time to set up the email account. Uh, as at the moment I really don't have. I'm trying to keep, the, uh, keep this video down to under 20 minutes. Um, that's the aim. Um, what else do we have in here? If I go down the bottom, we can go to About Phone. Uh, we've got Software Update in here. Tells us what Android version. Uh, so it's 2.32, and all the other build information. There we go. That's uh, it's all pretty standard and straightforward from that point of view. Uh, we can do uh, something on the home screen, which is uh, fairly important. That that is Pinch. So we can pinch the home screen and it will show everything that we've got running uh, on uh, desktop, all of our widgets all in one place. So if I come back out of exit overview, it's called overview, uh, but if I come out of here and I add, I don't know, something else here, a widget, what else can we add? Let's add, um, let's add the Facebook widget, which I'm obviously not logged into, but now if I actually pinch that, it becomes one of the things that will shrink down the side. So I've got loads and loads of widgets running. Uh, maybe I've got the video. Um, let's come back out of here a second uh, and go into here and pick the video. And we'll resume playing. And we pinch that. Oops, not let me do that. There we go. I can actually go straight to that and it will resume playing from there. Uh, resume playing my video. So I can actually, if I've got lots and lots of widgets on there, we can pinch it. Actually, works with just two fingers, not as many as I'm using, but equally works with many. Um, but I can zoom in and out, and it's useful if you've got lots and lots of applications running on there. I say that's called overview, um, and that I think is very useful, um, when, especially when you're going to have uh, once you load up your display or your uh, home screen with dozens of applications. In terms of other applications or other widgets, uh, we've got a thing that will tell us data traffic, that's pretty cool. You can turn on, on and off the data traffic, so that's useful. Again, if you're roaming, that's going to be very useful. Uh, home screen tips, well, that's straightforward. Market, media shortcuts, music player, news and weather, pictures and photos, make places, timescape widget, which we've already got, track ID, and even YouTube, right on the desktop there too. That's kind of kind of neat. And what else have we got? We've got other wallpapers and shortcuts, so you've got wallpapers, live wallpapers as well. Um, so we can have live wallpapers if we see fit, so that would be quite cool as well. So let's have the Galaxy just for fun. There we go. Now oh, maybe not. So there we go, well, that's uh, kind of a quick sort of overview and demo of the hardware. Uh, and a little bit of a look at the user interface on the Sony Ericsson Xperia Arc. 
as I say, please do bear in mind this is a prototype. Um, I will have a full review for you as soon as we can get our hands on the final hardware. Um, we won't review a prototype device, it's probably not fair. So we will have a full review for you once it becomes final. Uh, and also we'll do a proper unboxing video once we have full and final retail hardware. Um, now that review will be up uh, just as soon as we can get our hands on it basically. Um, in the meantime, if you want to follow us on Twitter, ask any questions about the ARC or indeed any other devices from Sony Ericsson, please do uh, tweet us on Twitter, twitter.com slash Tracy and Matt, or indeed on Facebook, facebook.com slash Tracy and Matt.co.uk. I will be back soon with some more videos and reviews on Tracy and Matt.co.uk, but for now, thanks for watching.